The Texans are off to the best start in franchise history, but can they hand the Colts their first loss here in 2009? AOR, your folks, Jason Horowitz, NFL.com's Pat Kerwin. Yes. Glad to be with you on the NFL Preview Show presented by Tyson Anytizers here on CBSSports.com. And, you know, Pat, for, forget the are they for real question because yes, I hate that please. question. Forget that question. But are they in the class? Are they ready to be in the class of Indianapolis? No. But they're moving towards it, and they're making great progress. And it reminds me of how we were when we had to be in a division with Dan Marino and Jim Kelly. You can you can get better, but the numbers might not show up in your win-loss. They are moving towards that. They have a winning record. I talked to one of their linemen this week, and I said, is it going to your head? You finally have a winning record. You're winning on the road. He goes, no. We kind of walk around here like we haven't done anything yet. And all eyes are on the Colt game where they have never won. In Indianapolis. Have never, and you say when we were in the division, you, of course, were with yes. the Jets in the front office. Uh, haven't won at Indianapolis, 1-13 in all-time against the Colts. And the problem, of course, as anybody would have against Indianapolis, is Peyton Manning. How do they handle that situation? <laughs> okay. In the 0-7 record that they have in Indianapolis, Peyton Manning has thrown 20 touchdowns and two interceptions. He understands how to play this team. And, and my radio partner, Tim Ryan, was there for a couple days. He said, Peyton runs the practices. Peyton runs the scout team. Peyton understands what's going on in that Houston Texan defense, and he'll be ready for it. He will not throw interceptions, and he'll be all over them, and he's going to push them that they're going to have to keep that passing game going to stay up with the scoring. And he's got his weapons. We'll see if Anthony Gonzalez plays this week. It's kind of week in, week out, mm -hmm. although it doesn't look like it's going to be the case. Uh, one weapon you know Houston will not have, that's Owen Daniels. He's lost oh. for the season. Pat, you know, they're feeling good about themselves in the record. They've won 3-0. and but that's a huge hit to this offense. He leads the team with five touchdowns. Let me explain all the problems caused by Owen Daniels' injury. Number one, he was the most targeted tight end in the National Football League. That meant more passes were thrown towards him than even Tony Gonzalez. No one but him. So he's gone. What does that provide the defense? And Eric Winston, their right tackle, told me, we talked about how it's going to affect the run game. The safety doesn't have to worry about staying off and covering Joel Dreesen. He doesn't have to do it. He's going to get up and he's going to be working against the run game. And the other thing that can go on here, and I think it will go on quite a bit, is I can fully double cover Andre Johnson knowing that the tight end's not part of this passing game. And that's another problem, too, because Andre Johnson, they haven't been able to target him as much because he's been getting so much coverage and the injury and the bruise long. Right. We'll see what happens in this game. you got two great receivers, Andre Johnson on one side, Reggie Wayne on the other. Phenomenal wideouts uh, for these guys to look at. We'll see who has the bigger effect. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about the running game. That's an issue here for Houston because sure. Steve Slayton was benched for putting his fifth ball, losing his fifth fumble last week. Ryan Motes comes in, does a great job, career high, but he's a career backup. Ryan Motes, Chris Brown, Steve Slayton, Gary Kubiak says they're all going to play. Can that work? It can work because they, there's a couple roles that they get set up. I can easily see Moats getting all the first down runs and the second down running situations. I could see Slayton back in the game for the third down stuff. Before this last fumble that put him on the bench, a couple points I want to make here. That guy was averaging over 100 yards of offense per game for a month, and most of it was in the receiving area. He's a terrific third down back. Let me talk about the fumbles now. I know the coach is mad, and I would have benched him too. But Tiki Barber went through that, came out on the other side. And he didn't come out on the other side by going to the bench and staying there. He came by getting himself together mentally and taking a correction on it. S small point, but a big point. He's had 10 fumbles in the same amount of games that Adrian Peterson has had 11 fumbles. Calm down, coach. Get him back on the field. Give him his opportunity to help you win. That's an interesting point. Do they win? No. Okay, <laughs> point well taken. 1 p.m. Eastern Joseph on CBS. <laughs> and for more on this case, stay with CBSSports.com. That'll do it for the NFL Preview Show presented by Tyson Anytizers, the meaty good man snack. For Pat Kerwin, who's the man of simple words, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.